You know, Jim, I've always been fascinated about scenes that are in movie trailers but don't wind up in the final <laughs> film. Now, now we talked in Terminator. I always get busted on this. <laughs> now, we talked in Terminator 2 about the Michael Bean scenes. Right. And I'm watching last night, and I'm thinking, I don't see Where Charlton Heston say, I got Mr. my President, best man. I got one of my best men inside. And Actually, the reason we took that out is because it was, um, it, well, we took a lot of stuff out for running time. I had to cut about, I think, 12 minutes out of the picture just to get it to a length where the pace was fast enough that people stayed up. You notice at the screening how they were laughing or they were cheering every you know, 30, 40 seconds, something like that. It kept a sense of excitement going all the way through the movie. You know, when the film was long, you didn't quite have that. It hadn't quite ignited yet. So, so that's one of the things that fell by the wayside. Okay. And but it, well, is Heston great, though? As, I mean, who can play Arnold's boss? Yeah. You know, who's more intimidating than he is? You know, it's funny, when I was in the eighth grade, part of the reason I got involved with films was I watched him shoot a movie called Skyjacked at the Oakland Airport, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I got into Super 8 movie making after that. Mm -hmm. What kind of presence does he have when he comes to the set, We're on you and on the crew? You're talking about Char Charlton, Charlton Heston? Charlton, yes. Yeah. Or Chuck, as he, as he <laughs> made me uh, call him. Um, he worked on the film for one day, and it was the single best shooting day I've ever had. He is the most consummately professional actor I've ever worked with. He was there for everything. He came with ideas. He didn't lock in on them. He, he did the bit. He knew the lines. He was there for every bit of off screen for all the other actors. And uh, he was just absolutely the most charming, professional guy I've ever worked with. Now, you also and I've worked with some pretty cool people, you know? So there. Okay. So there is, there is something to be said for the, for the old school of, how, of, you know, of acting, of how it's done. Now, you worked with the military on this film. Mm -hmm. Now, your reputation, you have a reputation of a big budget filmmaker. You have Arnold Schwarzenegger. They have the big <laughs> budgets. <laughs> the military has the big budgets. <laughs> now, when these pilots, military, when these military pilots arrive with their mm -hmm. Harrier jets, mm -hmm. just how jazzed are they to be a part of this movie? Well, they have the best poker faces, these guys. You would never know that they were excited, excited, but you know they're tickled pink to be doing it. But they can't let it in any way intrude on their process because they are flying a $30 million aircraft, and if they don't do it right, they're going to trash it and or hurt themselves or somebody else. So they're totally focused, and it was totally by the numbers. We had a, we, uh, I got up at 3 a.m., flew in a helicopter down to a naval air station in Key West, briefed with the pilots for an hour and a half on paper and using models and so on. We did it by the numbers. We're going to do this, then we're going to do this, then we're going to do this. And I said, I'll see you in the air. I flew back up to, to our location, went up in a Learjet, and met them on station at like 400 knots. And we did the shots. And it was just like that. Now, uh, I spoke to Linda Hamilton a few years ago for, for T2. Sure. And she said that when I she... I spoke to her this morning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> well, when, when, when she found out that um, Arnold was going to be cast for that film, she wasn't quite sure how serious the film was going to be. Mm -hmm. When you went to meet him for the first time... Uh, on Terminator 1. Yes, on yeah. Terminator 1. What kind of... Res did you have any reservations? Oh, I had huge reservations because he had been suggested to play the other character. And the other character had, you know, 25 pages of expository dialogue where he tells the entire history of the future world, you know. And Arnold hadn't done that sort of work yet. He'd only played Conan, and that's all I knew. I really didn't know anything about him. When I met him, I found that he was charming, wonderful, funny, and I wanted to work with him, but not as that character. So I suggested the Terminator, kind of cringing, thinking uh, he would get upset. And uh, he loved the idea. And that's that. That's history being made, you know? And I have a question about sequels. When Aliens came along, mm -hmm. how many doubts did you... Did you have a lot of doubts about that? And did you find yourself getting resistance from crew members, that type of thing, about uh, topping the first film? Yeah, I th well, it's kind of two different things. I mean, I, I never had any doubts about Aliens or Alien 2, as it was called when I, when I wrote it. I changed the title sort of a little bit later on um, because I just loved it. And I never questioned it. But then everybody else around me, you know, agents and people advising me, you know, giving me friendly advice said, don't do this, this is a mistake. And then, of course, I got to England, and here I was in the country and at the studio where the first film had been shot, and a lot of the crew had worked on it. And here was some young upstart, you know, Canadian director. They all thought I was American, but I didn't correct them, uh, trying to tell them how to do things. And that actually was pretty rocky. And then about halfway through the shooting, Terminator came out on video, and they only watched movies on video in England at that, at that time. And they all came in one by one. I went, good job, Gov. You know, and then after that, everything smoothed out. Okay, great. All right, thanks very much, Gary. Okay, yeah, good. I appreciate it.